Hello and welcome to the Dale Dialogue. This is Pallavi Jha. I am the Managing Director of Dale Carnegie India. In the Dale Dialogue, we bring to you uh, experts and champions in the HR fraternity. And today we are in dialogue with Rahul Pinjarkar, who is the CHRO of Trent Hypermarket. So Rahul, welcome to the Dale Dialogue. Uh, it's great to have you with us. Good evening and good evening all of you who are watching me today. Great. So, you know, these are those times, uh, Rahul, where uh, most companies have broken apart, but you're fortunately in a sector that seems to be uh, doing well or thriving in a sense, if you look at consumer staples, is, is the only thing as an essential service uh, that actually kept the wheels moving. So what, what really were the changes uh, that you, you saw in the initial period of the crisis blowing out in India, the lockdown, and how did you cope with that new reality? See, first and foremost, we belong to a non-discretionary buying category. So uh, as a function of that, we have been outside the purview of disaster management guidelines or yes. disaster management law. That means our consumers needs to be served, our consumers needs to be fed, and therefore our stores needs to be open. Yes. And uh, that was a challenge to get people back to stores, you know, to help them overcome the fear, fear factor, and, you know, inspire them to be, to be on the field, to be on the stores, to get this uh, overall objective met. So that's the business that we are in, and we're a little different. I'm not saying that we're doing well, but yes, we, in this tough times, we have been, you know, around 80% of our budget. Okay, which is considered to be decent, you know. Yeah, why not? It's, at this yeah. time, everybody would give a leg and an arm for that kind of performance. Yeah, and in the initial stages of the lockdown, there was a certain uh, panic buying, which has helped us to, you know, really increase our trajectory in sales. But, uh, you know, over a period of time, that has come down and people, but people, uh, we have seen quite a lot of footfall in the stores, uh, you know. Uh, we have taken utmost measure in terms of educating our customers, educating our employees on new normal, which is, you know, social distancing and sanitizing, frequent sanitizing, uh, you know, giving uh, announcements in the stores frequently, uh, you know, uh, training people on the COVID inductions uh, and ensuring that, you know, we have uh, all the safety precautions at stores, you know. Uh, second thing which we have supported in terms of helping people to reach our stores without too much of hassles because you know you know during those times peak of lockdown we have seen police bashing we have seen uh, yeah. you know not allowing people to move across uh, 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 yeah. on the roads and that is the time when we have helped people to carry the employee passes the identity cards which we have given especially to help people know and authorities know that right. hey, I work for this business which is into essential services. Correct. Okay, and please allow us to go to our stores, you know, otherwise India will not be fed. So that is the larger objective that, you know, we have, uh, we have uh, inculcated. Uh, uh, we have uh, always came up with innovative solutions to help business tide over these difficult times, I must say. Uh, uh, stores fill rate has dropped to 20% in those times, you know, and that's where being a part of Tata Group, we have leveraged companies and, you know, businesses which are completely shut down. So if you look at Chroma, if you look at Westside, these are not discretionary, these are, these are not non-discretionary buying, you know, right. these are discretionary buying. Right. And as per, and they were coming under the purview of lockdown or disaster yes. management guidelines. But being a fair organization, we have been paying the staff in the stores of Chroma and Westside. And that's where we have leveraged the human resource in those companies and got them to our stores. Okay. Wherein, you know, uh, we looked at the stores and the catchment area. And if we have people from these companies staying in zero to two kilometers of uh, the catchment, then, you know, we are inspired. Motto was only communicate, 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 inspire. Yes. And in the lockdown, we have seen our 
you know, uh, CEO on the field, on the stores. Uh, I was personally visiting stores, you know, with all complete safety precautions because, you know, if you want to inspire people, you can only lead with an example. You can't be sitting in home and telling people to go and visit stores because we are in the business of people. You know, we don't have any other assets, you know, like factories or etc. We have only our people which make things happen for us. And that's where, you know, the entire leadership, uh, you know, worked uh, or operated with uh, lead by example phenomena. Fantastic. So there's so many elements I heard, you know, I obviously there was this whole challenge of the logistics of getting people to stores, but, you know, you were able to repurpose one set of people for uh, making up for those challenges and work as one team, which is, uh, which is uh, brilliant because companies mostly struggle to break silos. And I think you successfully did that. And uh, of course, the overcoming of fear and uh, yeah. you know, giving the sense of purpose. That's, that's brilliant. To know. I have seen collaboration with very, very short distance in these three months. I have seen how operations, HR, safety, uh, you know, administration, everyone coming together, you know, and working for the same cause that we need to feed India. You know, we can't keep our stores closed. Okay. More important thing which I would like to talk about it is uh, the frictionless shopping because this was, these were the times when people appreciated contactless delivery. You know, right. and we have our online partner, you know, Starquick, which has completely leveraged this uh, opportunity to make it you know, going to the societies, supplying, going to the catchment, supplying. You spend so much time talking to us about how you got your uh, staff to really come inside the store so that they could service the customers. Uh, but the reality, and I'll speak about myself, is I was a person who always preferred to pick my own vegetables with my hands. I was most uncomfortable with digital deliveries for fruits. But of course, uh, when, you, when you have no choice, you'll end up doing exactly that. And now I've gotten used to it. And I don't see myself going back into a market uh, or a store to buy. It's just so much easier. Maybe I've got lazy, but it's so much easier to just order everything online. So do you see that shift really happening uh, of uh, moving from really the, uh, the brick and mortar stores to digital? And do you see that as a, as a big transformation challenge? Certainly, I think only channel is going to do is the next new normal. Look at the new normal today. Everything is work from home. We have done conferences work from home. We have done, you know, the social, uh, you know, post-conference uh, cocktail work from home. I mean, what do you want? I mean, you know, the travel is completely curtailed. The demands have gone off the shelf. I think that's the new normal. And I must relate with that, that, you know, you're... You click and collect, which is the new thing which we have started in our online business. It's like a McDonald's, you know, you just drive in through, pick up your stuff and drive out. Now, so what does it mean in terms of people? I mean, earlier you needed a lot of people to be in your stores. Do you see over a period of time in the retail industry, do you see a, a bigger shift or bigger share of the business coming from digital and online services? and not so much as uh, brick and mortar stores. And if that is the case, what happens to your uh, you know, organization structure or roles within the organizations? And uh, what does it mean for people who are looking for careers in retail? See, I agree to large extent what you say when it comes to apparels business. So if you look at West Side, if you look at Zara, you know, these are our businesses, uh, uh, you know, I understand, you know, you do online, the person will come and if, you, if the clothes doesn't fit you, if you don't like the shade, you can always return it, you know, within that time window. I'm not sure whether food and grocery will really, you know, we will go out of brick and mortars because, you know, when you go and buy dal chawal, you know, at some point of the year, look and feel here. I mean, you can't just, you, you, you can't just bring it online and, you know, you don't know what quality is. Yeah, there are, you know, uh, so many SKUs. Uh, I think uh, my sense is fresh, you know, if you want to buy leafy vegetables, you want to buy, uh, you know, green vegetables, broccoli and zucchini. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's still the kind of cons customer feedback that we get it. I think they even today appreciate the kind of display we have. And the, you know, uh, as far as their comfort that, you know, the store is safe, 
this store is sanitized and you know a lady i mean i'm using lady because we have created a very virtual customer called aisha uh, she would like to be left alone in the store you know and she will pick up the stuff which uh, she would like to pick up basis her own uh, you know choices the online uh, business will certainly grow but will it cannibalize my brick and mortars i still have my own doubts so you're betting on both that's wonderful so tell me uh, apart from uh, so when you're looking at the future what would you say are your top three priorities from the people perspective uh, for or you know from an hr perspective uh, see we we have carved the hr agenda for ourselves which only talks about two things how do you help achieve perform, achieve organization uh, how do you help organization achieve its performance for today and how do we build an organization for tomorrow these are the typical two fold hr strategy achieving performance for from for today just comes from two things you got to get good people you know in ahead of time so and helping uh, our organization uh, to build organization for tomorrow it essentially comes from two things that do i have uh, right people to take leadership leadership positions in times to come and do i have ecosystem structure climate to manage this change you know the kind of change that you and me are going through you know do we have that are we able to navigate through this ambiguity well or not so that talks about the ecosystem and culture and ethos and all that so let me pick on one of them you know now that we talking about leadership uh, for the future how will leadership for the future be different from leadership maybe uh, the leadership ask maybe a few months ago so basically i think uh, work practices related changes will have to be led by hr leaders okay and that's the first one okay which uh, which was not too much of a case you know when things were normal today everything is being questioned okay and uh, uh, like we got to think that how many maximum people can work from home and still deliver on the on the on the business priorities uh, how can we go maximum hr processes digital and why not why hr processes you know each every leader has to look at what kind of processes can become digital in times to come okay uh, the most important thing from the hr leadership standpoint is Uh, how do we promote wellness in the company and uh, you know uh, how do we advise the line managers or line leadership on people uh, strategies suitably in times to come you know which is little different uh, especially in when the when the normal is being questioned right so this is what i believe uh, from the hr leadership uh, you know uh, see we have always been talking about vuca world right always you know in every conference you go there is a, a topic on vuca world but you know what we are experiencing today is actually a vuca world we don't know when is when it's going to end and are you really giving you know inspiring people that you know we are with you okay uh, we are uh, Uh, helping ma- helping managers and their team members to build trust among themselves because trust building will play an extremely important role and i'm not saying that this is a hr agenda but i think it's a leadership agenda i think hr only becomes a custodian of driving uh, this uh, this this change okay so that's what uh, i believe you know what's interesting rahul is that uh, every every other uh, member from hr fraternity who's come on the tail dialogue has in some form of another spoken about trust and i think uh, it's something that to be understand very well at tail kanegi because that's uh, that's been in an area we've done so much research in and we do a lot of uh, training in on how leaders can build greater trust uh, but in your mind what can leaders do to build trust and how do you know there is trust good question i think difficult it's a, uh, people can answer it just at the spur of the moment but i think it requires a lot of reflection and i think if i go back to your principles okay whether it is uh, how do you win and influence people 
okay you can only do that when you yourself become a role model of what you are speaking and what you are preaching okay people have to see behaviors in you as a leader when you are wanting those behaviors to be exhibited by them at workplace or in life right okay that's you know that's where the credibility plays an extremely important role okay if I- so tell me you know typically the retail industry is a large uh, you know employer of young graduating students and youngsters in a sense um and, and the world of customer service is changing very fast for retail so what would you uh, advise all those uh, young graduating students who are suddenly finding themselves in the middle of this crisis uh, what would you say to them uh, in terms of what they need to do what what are the some of the things if you were hiring you would look for and that this is possibly the time for them to hone that so it is very unfortunate on their path to land in the situation like this because you know the businesses are tough businesses are tough the hiring is frozen mostly you know if i talk about uh, you know uh, majority maybe 60 70% of the organizations uh, i can only say to those young friends that you know you got to be open for things that you know you, you are coming on your way okay many times when you have choices you say that no i don't want to work in sales i want to work in marketing as my first state okay which is fine which is good which is ideal but when you are landing in times like that like today take a role which is coming on your way and make the best out of that opportunity it's definitely an industry that's got a very bright future it's got to possibly take a bigger uh, shape on digital and yeah. to do. and uh, the good news for students is uh, self confidence can always be built uh, powers of customer service can always be built uh, powers of persuasion can always be built so if, if you don't have it i guess you can build it um tell me in terms of your perspective on learning and development and where is it which are the skills that really require deep development in the retail industry i think we need to build on capabilities on the digital side well that's fascinating digital is the future and uh, i guess that's where we are uh, headed i think most industries are going that way on a no choice basis as well um you know uh, i want to actually come uh, to the final part of our dialogue today and this is to really ask you about our famous human relations principles of dale carnegie are you all familiar with them and i want to ask you can you pick one of these principles um and tell me which uh, which one is it that appeals to you the most which one do you actually live by and do you have a story to tell us about it yeah so you know as yes, i have gone through uh, the principles and those are not new i think those are uh, age old and still 100 years old yes <laughs> right still whether it is covid non covid it makes so much of sense in today's context okay. i think the one principle that i really relate with is give, give honest and sincere appreciation because i have a story around that you know i strongly believe that it is the context that makes people to perform in certain way or it's a context that makes person to behave in a certain way performance is nothing but a behavior and right. you know instead of dealing with performance i think leaders managers should work towards changing the context I mean, you sincerely appreciate people you know genuinely appreciate people okay i think it has taken me to build my equity and credibility in the eyes of my team and the people that i have worked with you know when we give honest and sincere appreciation uh we are not talking about flattery we are not talking about something that we don't really believe in we really talk about uh appreciating something that the person person's own quality and you know giving it uh, uh, uh evidence on why you believe that quality is appreciable uh that's what makes the what that's what makes the appreciation sincere and when you do that you see a lot of change in behavior as you rightly said so 
I really appreciate that. Sincerely, honestly, I think you just hit the nail on its head. And thank you so much for being on the Tail Dialogue. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. Thank you. It was, it was my pleasure to interact with you.